Hello and welcome. This is Dawn. So for today, we have a lot to cover. So I'm going to try to get through this as succinctly as possible. But we have not one but three cards and there are a lot of lovely layers featured in these cards. So one of the things that I really love about this series is that you can use them not only alone, but together. So let's create some scenes. Now I'm only gonna share one card from start to finish and snippets of the others. So the one I'm gonna do features the apple barrel, the gourds, and the mushrooms. And I'm gonna show you how to put that one together and build that scene, but all of the same things will apply to the other two cards. I thought we'd start with the apple barrel since that is featured on all three cards. And I'm gonna show you a fun way, a fun and quick way to do realistic looking wood. I've shared other ways to color wooden objects, but this way is by far one of the quickest and gives you the most realistic results. So I've taken the Vintage Photo Distressing Pad and I'm just swiping it across this die cut. So the apple barrel has the front of the barrel and the back of the barrel. There's a lot of detail um, etched into the die that debosses into the apple barrel itself. So you're going to already have a lot of texture. Now I'm just adding in those different levels of color that makes it look more like old wood, right? So the wood is like cracking in some spots. Now I've picked up the, uh, what is walnut stain and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm just lightly swiping the pad across the barrel. Right now it looks like a hot mess, uh, but you can already still kind of see how it's giving you the grain of the wood. Now, don't manhandle your die cuts. Don't do what I just did. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of ink in this paper right now from where we went straight to paper. So it's a little um, delicate at the moment. So try to be gentle. I'm just using a blending brush now to pick up basically what color is on my mat and giving this um, an even base coat of color. I'm not too worried right now about creating shadows and highlights and all that. I'm just, you know, getting down a base color for that wood. This is gonna give me a better idea of how much more of the swiping I need to do. I don't wanna to do too much because I don't want to get rid of all of my highlights. So by adding a little bit of color in between each one and starting to fill in that wood, I can get a better idea of how much is enough. So again, just right now using that ink that's on my mat, and now I'm going to start deepening up the color around the edges of the barrel. So to make it appear round, I'm gonna go heavier on the left and the right, and just a little on the bottom as well, leaving a brighter spot there in the middle so that it looks rounded. So now I can come in and start adding more color. So here it's off screen, I apologize, but I'm dipping my blending brush into my actual ink pad and bringing that, and I'm starting to blend that in. It is completely up to you how light or how dark you want your wood barrel to be. I created three, so I think I did, I think I did three different colors. Now they're not in front of me, but I think I did three different um, intensities of color. So it was maybe look like some of the barrels were older than others. I've switched over to a smaller blending brush now so that I can get a little more targeted with my blending here. I'm gonna deepen up those edges even more and again, I'm just gonna keep adding color here until I get the depth of color that I want. I'm gonna leave that top edge a little bit lighter because that is the top of the wood and it would be catching some light. I'm also gonna add a little bit more color here in the center area. There is a metal band, well, it's not metal yet. <laughs> There's a band that the die cuts that you can put around the, ba uh, the barrel. That would be that metal band that holds all of these planks together to create the barrel. I'm just adding a little bit of darker color beneath it so that it, it makes it give a little bit of a shadow because it would be raised off the barrel. Now, finally, I'm gonna take the side of this Bitty Blender brush here and I'm gonna go in between each plank of the boards. Just deepen that up and that's going to further give the illusion that these are actually separate planks of wood. This step right here makes all the difference. I'm also matching the shadow and the highlight here with this, uh, with creating the planks. So in the shadowed areas, I went deeper. And then in the highlighted areas, I went a little lighter because you wanna match your lighting. So here you go, this is the front of the barrel. And just for comparison's sake, I wanted to show you the difference between using that ink swiping there. The top barrel does not have that and the bottom uh, barrel I did do, obviously you saw me do it. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, and then I just repeated the same step with the back of the barrel, and then I did the band that goes on top of the barrel. And I've shown you guys how to do this rusted metal look before, so I just, same exact thing, ink blended it, then used a sea sponge to add some spots of color, and we were good to go. All right, so now it's time to do our gourds. This is the Lovely Layers Fall Bounty, and I'm going to pull off the leaves and some of the pumpkins. Now, off camera, I've die cut everything from white cardstock, and it's time to start ink blending our little pumpkins and gourds. I'm going to be using Distress Inks. I prefer these for ink blending. Um, I like that the colors blend. I think I've mentioned this before. The colors blend instead of laying on top of each other because they are trans parent. So I'm going to start off with a little scattered straw. We're going to make an orange pumpkin, but I don't want it to be one flat color. I do want some variation and some depth in those colors. So I'll start off with my lightest, which again is scattered straw in this case, and I'm going to add that to my highlight areas. And as always, I'm going to use the side of this bitty blender to add in some deeper um, lines of color. I'm following the, I'm following the detail that's been added into the die cut by the die itself. So we'll just now move on to dried marigold, which is a little more of a lighter yellowy orange. I'll start filling in my shadowed areas and blending that up into my highlight area. Again, I'm keeping some areas very bright. So in this case, the pumpkin is rounded both um, vertically and horizontally. So I'm gonna go darker around the edges and the bottom. And then I'm also going to leave a highlight around the top third, top quarter of the pumpkin where it would be the highest. So it's catching all that light. Just like with the previous colors, I'm using the edge of that blender to add some heavier concentrated color into the crevices of the pumpkin there where each segment is kind of um, indented. You'll also notice that I'm not going extremely dark just yet. I'm gonna wait until most all of my pieces are colored and then I'll determine if I needed to darken up any areas or not. Then all we have to do is do our little stem here. I'm gonna choose which one I wanna use. I didn't pay attention to which went to which, you guys. I just picked one I liked and stuck it on there. <laughs> and for the stems, we're gonna color them all the same. We're using brushed corduroy and I'm just kind of pouncing some color on it. I paid a little more attention to the bigger stems, but for the little ones, I literally just inked up the brush and pounced it over the stem. All right, with that done, we can just adhere it, a little liquid adhesive and those handy dandy tweezers, and we're good to go. Isn't she cute? All right, I finished up the rest of my gourds using the same method of coloring. I just swapped out my colors, and now it's time to arrange them in our little apple barrel. I will take way too long to decide on how to arrange these as usual, but I'm going to leave a couple of the, I'm going to leave a little bit of this in just so you guys can see all the different ways that you could arrange this. Um, I colored up some of those leaves as well, and you could throw those in the barrel with the gourds and stuff. Ultimately, I decided to use mine to accent and decorate around the bottom of the barrel, but again, it's up to you. There's so many different options. So I ultimately landed here, and then I decided, you know what? I need more for my barrel. Let's pull in some of those mushrooms. So I got my mat back out and die cut some of the mushrooms and it's time to color those up. For all of the mushrooms, I used pumice stone distress oxide ink and just added a little bit of color to the stems and the gills. Then for the tops, I just added a little bit of dimension. This is the, don't ask me what kind of mush, I'm not a forager. I'm not a mushroom my myconologist. What is it called? I don't even know what it's called. I don't forage mushrooms. I don't know what kind of which. <laughs> That's one hobby I haven't gotten into yet. I do the gardening. Love the gardening. The uh, mushrooms, no, not for me. I would kill myself. Like I would, <laughs> I'm too scared to forage the mushrooms. They're dangerous guys. They, mm -mm. Nope. I will leave that one to the professionals. So I'm just coloring. This is the one I'm going to make it a little red cap mushroom. Per, again, probably not what type of mushroom it is. Don't even know what it's called. That's what this one is. So I'm just adding a little bit of depth and shading here to the underneath of the mushroom. And then that little cap piece, I'm going to ink blend with a little fired brick and just set that bad boy right on top. When you're ink blending like this, pay attention to the way that the die cut itself has been illustrated and curved. You'll notice that I followed the contour of the die when 
uh, choosing where to put my highlight on this. So it comes up, there's a hump right there. I know that that means that that is higher and that's gonna be my highlight area and then it comes down on the sides. And so I made that deeper to emu emulate my shadowed areas. And then I just followed the same steps for the rest of the mushrooms. Use some pumice stone, a little bit of old paper here and there, just for a little bit of variation and to warm up some of them so they weren't too cool. Ink blend each layer, then stack them and glue them all together. And after I was finished with all of my mushrooms, I went ahead and added them to my arrangement. And now I'm gonna pick this up with press and seal and put it off to the side. Because remember, I'm creating three little uh, scenes, little, I'm creating three little barrels here filled with different things. And I honestly have no clue how I'm gonna turn them into a cart at this point. But here are my three little barrels. You can see here I did each barrel a little different and I filled them with different things. So I used the apples and the apple barrel in one, I used the gourds and the mushrooms, and then in the final one I used the garden veggies. And it was about this time I decided that I wanted to create some little scenes. So I pulled out the Lovely Layers Barnwood Fence. And you guys, this is she's a big mamma jamma. So she is a full A2 card size panel here. So I decided to go with a five by seven card. I did also create an A2 card, but you gotta get a little creative and I will show you what I did at the end when I review the cards. All right, so I've die cut this from white cardstock because mm, cutting it from a colored cardstock would be too easy. <laughs> We're gonna start with white. I'm gonna take this antique linen and I'm gonna do the swiping method. I want this wood to be much lighter than the barrel that we did because I'm gonna pair this with a darker barrel. And you'll notice in the final cards when we go to review them, I have lighter wood paired with darker wood. Uh, I think the lightest wood barrel I paired with a whitewash fence. So I wanted to vary the different woods. I didn't want them to blend into each other. So for this one, instead of going with the vintage photo, we're going with the antique linen, which is gonna give us a lighter base wood to start with. So after I had done the bigger blending brush, I've switched over to the smaller one to do some more targeted blending. This is gonna add in a little bit even, a little bit more deeper of that color because I'm adding it more concentrated. So I'm gonna have the lighter antique linen where I used the larger blending brush. I'm gonna have some more targeted color here where I'm using the smaller blending brush now I'm switching over to the vintage photo and we're gonna add an even darker color here. So you can see we're building up the layers of color and we're allowing some of the light color to show. We're allowing some of the midtones all the way down to some deep darks. So again, using the side of that blending brush and using the detail that is embossed into the dye itself as a guide. Now I'm going straight to paper with that antique photo and here up close, you can see how we're building that depth. And I just repeated the same thing for the rest of the planks. And then I cut the crossbars there that are included in the die, colored those the same way. And now we just need to adhere those in place. This creates the cutest, most little realistic fence ever. So for the rest of our scene, we need some uh, greenery, some florals, and I'm turn to the autumn bouquet here and then this farm cart here creates the cutest little farm cart with this hay. I'm gonna use the hay to create grass. So we're gonna cut a couple of these little hay pieces and we're gonna color them like grass. Again, we've cut them from white. Can you believe that everything, everything on these cards started as white paper? It just amazes me what you can do with ink and paper. All right, so I'm taking some crushed olive and mm, is this crushed olive? It might be twisted citron. Let's find out. Crushed olive. So I'm gonna take some crushed olive and we're gonna ink that on here lightly. This is gonna be my highlight color. And then um, I've left it here in the paper for now. Because these are such fine detailed dyes, it's easy to, um, it's easy to be a little rough on them. But if you're careful, you can definitely color these like I'm doing here outside of the negative space. So I'm just taking that brush, adding some random color, just hitting that with a nice base coat. Now I'm gonna grab that mowed lawn and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna color the whole thing evenly. I want variations in color here. So I'm taking that mowed lawn and coming up from the bottom where I want it to be darker. And the crushed olive is gonna serve as the blades of grass that are being hit by light. So they would be a little more limey green. 
I'm going to use that brush and the edge of that brush like I always do and come in between some of the blades. So I am calling them blades. Look, I'm convinced myself this is grass. This is no longer hay. These are blades of grass. So depending on the color that you use, if you take a look at some of your dyes and some of their shapes, you can certainly transform them into things that they weren't meant to be. I'll continue running my brush, the side of my brush here at a straight, so I'm, all right, I'm turning my brush on the side so that I'm only using the very edge of the brush and I'm going up and down in a very light uh, vertical motion here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna add shadow to one side of the blade. So essentially I am choosing some blades to push to the background and making it appear as though some blades are on top. By just putting that little hint of a shadow there between the two blades, like where they cross over, is going to push one to the back and bring one to the front. It's just an illusion, an illusion of light and shadow. So now I'm going to check my work. I'm going to kind of bring my pieces together, make sure that this is going to give me the desired look, right? Because it is a little time consuming. And if I'm going to do more than one piece, I want to make sure that I am going to use them. Uh, <laughs> it It's just my time and a piece of paper, but my time is limited sometimes. So I want to make sure that it's giving me the effect that I want, and it definitely is. So here I've got my fence. This is going to create my little grass line. Oh, love it. Now I am, sometimes I'm my own worst enemy because I am going to need way more of these than I thought I was going to need because you know I'm going to layer them. And I did those off camera. I saved you the... Um, I saved you the time. And now we're going to add in some wildflowers here. I've used the auto bouquet to uh, do those leafy stems behind our barrel here. And now I'm gonna add in a little bit of a wildflower here. Don't ask me what kind this is supposed to be. It looks like some sort of aster. Um, I chose pink. No, I chose red. I chose red because I wanted to pull from that a single little red mushroom cap that we have. So I wanted to incorporate that red somewhere else in our composition. So I'm starting off with the crushed olive again, adding in a little bit of mowed lawn just to break up. And so it's, so it's not one flat color. That's my biggest tip when you are ink blending like this. Try to mix several different colors in your ink blending. Don't just stick with one, one color. Um, Mix in some cool blues with some of your warm blues, like I've done here. The crushed olive is more warm. It definitely leans more towards your yellow. Your mowed lawn is definitely more of a true green, so it's got more blue in it. And this is gonna add a ton of interest to your ink blending projects. And this rings true for anything. If you're like, nah dog, I'm not doing this ink blending. Um, it's just not my thing. This applies to your color palettes. That will apply to if you're using colored cardstock to die cut these. Um, it applies to watercolor. The more shades of a color that you can incorporate into your design. Now, I'm not saying you you know you're not turning it into a circus, but <laughs> if you're gonna do if you're gonna put greens in your bouquet and you're die cutting them all from solid, solid color cardstock, choose two different greens. And the same goes for your flowers. Choose two shades of the same color or three, uh, like I said, we're, it, we're not making a bag of Skittles, but <laughs> just having that, having a couple different shades of each color can really add so much interest to your design. You'd be surprised. All right, so once these are done, I've added them to my arrangement here, and I wanna add a little bit of a background. So I'm taking my pencil and I'm just kind of marking off where my grass line ends because I do want my background to fade away. I want some of this white to remain because I feel like it does make the po colors pop. So I'm going to add in just a hint of grass and then a hint of sky. So I've taken the crushed olive and I'm starting off by adding in, am I doing crushed olive? I'm doing a mix of crushed olive and mowed lawn. Right now this is mowed lawn. So I'm using my blender brush. I'm not being careful here, guys. It doesn't need to be blended. Remember, when I flip that press and seal back over, which is holding my whole arrangement, most of this is gonna be hidden by all of my um, my little scene. This is just going to create kind of a glow coming from behind it. It's gonna ground these things. See here, you can see how it just adds that green behind the grass. I didn't want the white showing through the grass. 
So this is, again, just going to ground, I mean, literally ground the, uh, the arrangement here. So I'm working with that mode lawn here for the foreground. And then as I work my way up, I am going to go into the crushed olive. So that's going to have more of a yellow tint where those things are further recessed back behind the fence and also make it look like the light is hitting that more because everything is bundled up and sitting on top of the ground right here. You're going to have a lot of shadow and the sun is not going to be hitting it. But as you get further back behind the fence and there isn't anything sitting directly on the grass, it's going to have more sunlight. And the olive itself is not quite as saturated, um, not as rich in color. And so it makes it look like it's off in the distance a little bit more. It gives the illusion that the horizon line is further back behind us, behind that fence. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to work the sky in using a speckled egg. I'm going to allow those, uh, that speckled egg and that olive to overlap just a little bit. Remember, uh, a lot of that is going to be hidden by the fence. So it's no big deal. You just need that hint of color shining through the panels. And I've said this before, I like to work lighter and build my color up. So if you, if you want, you can go in much heavier, um, off right off the bat, but me, um, I prefer to build. I prefer to build because I can control it a little bit more and I can stop before I've gone too far. So here I'm just doing an uneven sky. This will give the illusion of clouds back there too. And you really, again, it's really just to support the foreground. All right, so now all that's left is to adhere this. I'm going to start by putting a little bit of background here. Just this one piece will be enough to give the illusion that we have some other stuff going on behind the fence. I'll adhere that directly to the card panel with a little bit of liquid adhesive. And then as usual, I'm gonna use a mix of liquid adhesive, foam strips, and then a little bit thicker height foam tape as well. That way I'll get a lot of different variances in dimension, different variances in height. And I just think that that makes it so much more interesting. As if we didn't have enough going on in this card already. <laughs> but I can't help it. If you want, you can just adhere everything flat. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to show you all of the adhering because that would just be torture. But I'm using my regular method. Whenever I'm gluing down a complicated scene like this, I'm going to use my press and seal and I'm going to glue it down layer by layer. I repeated the same thing for all three cards. And now it's time to do our sentiment. And I used Heartfelt Hello Stampin' Dies for all three cards. I just chose a different sentiment for each one. Here you can see I'm just kind of uh, getting an idea for where I want to put the sentiment. I'm thinking it's going to go right here on this barrel. I wanted everything to concentrate right around the sentiment. Another good option would be up in the upper left there uh, on the fence. That would be a good one if you didn't want to cover up any of your ink blending. So we're going to go ahead and heat emboss this in white on brown cardstock. So I'm using my... Uh, Mini Misty here, we're going to treat our cardstock, we're going to stamp it in some embossing ink, and then heat set that embossing powder, and then use the matching die cut to cut it out. And of course, I cut two more and stacked those behind it. So let's take a look at the finished cards. I could not be more happy with how these turned out. Absolutely gorgeous. So here's the one that we just created together. The only thing that I added afterwards was a little bit of distress glaze to some of the areas. Um, I don't know that I would do it again. I chose not to do it on the other two cards because I do like it on the barrel. I like it on the rivets of the barrel, but I overall, mm, I don't know, on the fence. I love how we were able to utilize all of these different lovely layers and things that they weren't meant to be to create this beautiful little scene. Now here is the A2 card. You couldn't, I couldn't not use the apples. The apple barrel is the star of the show for all three cards. And here we've taken that large fence and we've trimmed it down. Now it fits on an A2 size card. Super easy, right? Look at all of the detail in these, those apples. It looks like you just reach out and grab them. Love, love, love the whitewash with the wood um, little barrel there. And then finally this one, this one is one of my favorites only because I want 
I want my bounty to look like this, you guys. I'm a gardener. I've grown everything in this basket, but not all at the same time. So that's my goal. I want to collect a huge, a huge little harvest like this, and I will be blessed beyond measure. All right, you guys, I hope that you liked this video. I know it was a little bit longer, but um, I tried to pack a whole lot in here. If there is anything that you did not see in the video, I have footage from a lot of all three of these cards. It would have just been a whole lot to include into one video. So if there is something specific that you want to see ink blended in, say, real time, let me know in the comments below. I will check if I have the footage for it. And if I do, I will create a separate video for you guys. All right. Don't forget, if you're looking for anything, check the description box below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.